हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग एंड ओ गॉड दिस क्वेश्चन इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट क्वेश्चंस फॉर इंटीशन पर्पसेस लाइक ओके ओके यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन एंड यू हैव टू बिल्ड ऑन व्हाट डेटा स्ट्रक्चर यू कैन एक्चुअली सॉल्व दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम ऑन व्हाट ऑन व्हाट एल्गोरिथम यू लाइक यू वांट टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम सो बेसिकली बिल्डिंग दैट पार्ट फ्रॉम हियर द क्वेश्चन पार्ट to actually going on to the data structure to actually solve this problem it's one of the best question i have seen so far which actually is very hard to go from this part which means the question reading part and actually applying okay what should i use that okay it is being used okay it can be used it cannot be used that stuff that is that's the reason like i just i just love this question so yeah move it without further ado uh without further appreciating the love for this question and let's go to the question itself um i'll just quickly go through the question basically we have equations as i where it just says as ai comma bi where it is ai upon bi and for the corresponding ith equation we have the value which means it is ultimately means that ai upon bi has a value as values of i cool and then it is also said that we have a, a queries of i which is also exactly as ci comma di which is actually nothing but same ci upon di now uh, we have to return okay if the answer cannot be found for this query so basically we have to find the answer for this query which means ci upon di ultimately we will be having many of such ai upon bi's like having the values and we have to ultimately find ci upon di which is the query answer which is we have to find if it is cannot be found then we have to write a minus one and mark conditions answer is always 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 valid the base will never be a zero and there is no contradiction at all which means it can't possible that you can as you can get a two different values from two different values of ai upon bi such that okay i'll just show but yeah there can't be any contradiction at all so please note this point it is very important because when i start like initially read this question i didn't read this point and i was thinking of the hcs oh what if this happened what if this happened so we don't have to think all that stuff cool now we have the question and let's see the example pretty quickly we have this equations as you know it is a comma b it will be represented as a upon b now a upon b i just wrote but what is the value to here Two is nothing but the value of that corresponding AI comma BI, right? Then B upon C, which is equation of B comma C, it is actually a B upon C, and its value is nothing but three. Cool. So it is the input which we are having now. For this input, I have to find the output. Output as in I have to find the value of A upon C, which means I have to find okay. It is queries of A comma C, but I have to find the value of A upon C. Thus, I will just see okay. I have the input right here a upon b and b upon c if i have to find a upon c mathematically thinking we can easily find a upon c by because a upon b we have if i just multiply this b upon c then i can just cut or cancel this b i will get a, a upon c so basically it is multiplication of a upon b and b upon c which is 6 which we get okay cool if i want to find a b upon a oh i can actually see that okay i have a, a upon b i will just reverse it down which means inverse it which means 1 upon A upon B will actually be a B upon A, which means two was the value of A upon B. So one upon A upon B is one upon two, which is zero zero point five. That is the answer. Let's see if I found find the value of A upon E, but I didn't. E was actually not present, right? Correct. So we can't find the answer for this. That's the reason. Answer is minus one. Cool. Um, A upon A, A was also present. A was also present, and A upon A is itself just cancelling out both of them. I get a one. That's the reason. Answer is one. For example, x upon x. Although x upon x answer should be one, but x was not present. So according to the question itself, you should return a minus one because it was not present for us. Now, cool. Ah, uh, you saw. Okay, Aryan looks like mathematical. Shall we apply something of? So basically, as soon as the question comes in, now we have to think what we have to apply, right? Ah, uh, one thing which comes in our mind is okay. Let's take an array and uh, Aryan. We have to find a upon c. now what i will do is i will try to grab some pairs which means which will have a and which will have c in the denominator and then by some mathematical operation i know that all these will be get all these will get cancelled so i will just try to take this thing out 
I'll say, okay, uh, that looks nice, but uh, how will you actually keep track of it? Which means, okay, you have this A, you have this C. Still, you can have many A's and many C's, which means A upon, let's say you have D, you can have A upon E also, you can have A upon F also. Then, how will you keep track of stuff? You can apply brute force stuff, that's nice, but how will you keep track of it? Let's see this with a better example. Let's say if I just have this example A upon B as 2, B upon C as 3, C upon D as 5, right? Ultimately, let's say I want C upon A to be my answer. Now, basically what I'm thinking of is, okay, C upon A, C upon A, I have to reach, basically A upon B, I'm going from A, okay, and something is being divided and I'm reaching 2. Ultimately, as we saw, okay, Mathematically, if we are about to find the answer, C upon A is nothing but simply C upon B into B upon A, which means reversing B upon C, because it was 1 upon B upon C, it is reversing A simply B upon A upon B, so 1 upon A upon B. So it is kind of that I am trying to go from this C to the A, any A possible, as simple as that. So what I did was, I just tried to go from this C to this B. Because of this B, it tried to reach, to reach to this B. And for sure, it can have multiple Bs. Which means, this B could also reach to another B, which is B upon, let's say, D. And maybe this D is reaching to some other thing, let's say, D upon F. So, it can have multiple, right? So, it is a reason. I can see, okay, from this C, I can reach to B because it is opposed, like above of me. So, I can reach to that B. And if I just say I am reaching, which means, I am finding my C upon B, right? by one way c upon b it is actually a three sorry b upon c is actually a three so c upon b is one upon three i can keep this operation for sight but now i'm thinking i'm just thinking because i have to ultimately find the answer for c upon a so i'm thinking how can i reach because ultimately my goal is to grab c to grab a now i can start from c and let's see how I can reach A because ultimately my goal is to grab both C and A and grab this. Okay, what is the multiplication like? So ultimately I just thought, okay, let's grab start with C. Then okay, for C I have above B, so for sure I will grab B. Now for I want something as A anywhere. So I just want okay for all the B's I'll just go and try see okay where all B's are there, where all B's are there, and then from that B okay I, if I just uh, reach it uh, A O, I can just simply take this path of B, of C, B, B, A to actually reach from C to A. You understand how this problem transformed from numerator to denominator to actually reaching from one point to another point. We started from here itself where we saw, okay, I have to get A upon C, which means anyhow, I have to bring out this A upon C. So we thought, okay, let's see, okay, how we can reach, basically connect both of them. Connect both of them. Or basically reach from this A to this C or basically from this C to this A. That is how we thought, okay. It is kind of looks like, okay, I am just going from one node to another node, then to another. It's a path. It's a graph. That is the reason how we thought, okay, this problem can be converted to a graph and then maybe we can just solve it. Because ultimately, I, ha I have to find the answer for A upon C. Or basically C upon A, anything. Which means I have to reach from C to A or from A to C. And I have multiple options. Because the option one right here shows, okay, I can go from A to B. And now RM, you say I can go from A to B. But A to B, so what this 2 means in here. So if we just go on thoda or D, then we can easily see, okay, if I can go from A to B, then it is 2. Now, uh, if I just can go from B to C, it is 3, which means if I want to go from A to C, which means A as a numerator and C as a denominator, so it will be 2 into 3. So ultimately the edges, which means these edges, I can just multiply them to actually go on. As, as I'm going on to every path, which means as I'm moving forward in the path, I can just multiply these edges to actually reach from this A to this C. And if I just reversing back, which means A, A upon B, because see, it is the denominator, which means it is the uh, dividend and it is the divisor, which means 2 is the dividend, which means A is the dividend and B is the divisor. So I can simply say, okay, A upon B is actually going from A to B. And if I just come from B to A, 
you will see that okay it is nothing but 1 upon a upon b that's the reason i just reverse the same thing it's 2 it's 1 upon 2 it's 3 it's 1 upon 3 it's 5 it's 1 upon 5 that is how we can actually go from this node to this node and build a graph out of it what happened because of this is now if i want to go from c to a i can simply go and try let's try to go from c to a and try to reach a yeah it is possible i can just go okay one by three is multiplied in my answer then one by two is multiplied by my answer and i can reach a that is the reason starting node i can just choose as c because ultimately c is my numerator or the evident and i have to reach to a divisor which means denominator i have to reach which is actually a in this case that is how we can actually reach now you saw how we build a graph from u to v which means if we have u upon v and let's say the value is x so basically it's a numerator it's a denominator which means u upon v i will can huge i can reach from u to v if i just take x which means u upon v will be x and vice versa also v upon u will be one upon x that is the reason i just by this way firstly we thought of how actually like is like what we have what we need to use now we like found out that we can use a graph now we can use a graph but still graph needs to have something all the values which are given for us we should be able to recognize that in a graph right so i just tried to build a graph out of these inputs and this is how we reach a conclusion that okay a to b i can just add a 2 which is a upon b is actually a 2 and vice versa also because b upon a is actually a 1 upon 2 and thus i built a this 1 upon 2 and then c b to c and then c to b and you will see it's a directed graph because ultimately if b upon c is 3 then c upon b is 1 upon 3 so both have different values same for this case now what will happen is a upon b is 2 b upon c is 2 if i want to go from a upon c which means i will try to go from a to c then i will just go on the path go on in the path and whatsoever values are coming in i will just multiply that part and i'll just ultimately reach upon a upon c's answer which is numerator and denominator which means starting from this node and reaching to the this node if i had to reach from c upon a so i will start from the c and try to reach a i will start from c and try to reach a and ultimately i will have these values as a multiplication which means 1 by 3 into 1 by 2 that is how we can simply build the graph multiply the result which comes in because i want to go from a to c and thus get the answer for any number and for sure please remember that there is no contradiction at all there will be no multiple paths coming into the same point and having the although if the paths are coming in also then still it will have the same value there will be no contradiction at all that is the reason they was written that there, there can be no contradiction else you will be you will be just confused that, okay which value to took which value to take if from this path or from this path right here that is the reason it just said okay there will be no contradiction at all now we just for sure know okay we have to find answer for every query right so let's look at the constraints once if it is possible if to act or like we can actually just simply do a traversal graph traversal because it was simply trying to reach from c if i want to find the answer for c upon a simply starting from c and trying to reach a that would be all trying starting from c reaching a that would be all so a simple graph traversal would actually work but let's see the constraints if we have got to optimize something or not if it is not the case so let's quickly verify that okay if something else or something optimization needs to be done or we can do a simple graph traversal and we would be good so for every query i would be needing to reach for let's say the query says okay reach c upon a so basically from c i have to go on to the entire graph and reach a so basically for every query i need to do an entire graph traversal graph traversal it just it's simply a dfs or a bfs as we have seen and if both can be applied it is shorter to write so usually usually we prefer to write a bfs function because it is shorter to write like we like we can write very fast and bfs both it can also be used it's just okay it's a bit longer code although both are easy both have the same time complexity same space complexity everything is same it's just okay one is easier and faster right because it's recursion it's a bit iterative so it is actually a bigger code but yeah uh for every query if i just try to apply a simple graph traversal which means the if i just say okay the edges are e vertices are v uh we can see equations length is 20 so by max different vertices it can be at max 20 or at max 40 and edges it can also be like at max 40 or maybe in, in this number so it can't go beyond let's say 100 or something for sure so for sure for every query queries are itself very less 
for every query i can very easily do a graph traversal and that would be it which means for every query i am doing a graph traversal let's say graph traversal takes a simple bfs or dfs which is nothing but o of e plus v then our total complexity will actually be q of e plus v which is actually a bfs or dfs and that's like which means okay i can simply do simply graph traversal for every query and when we say graph traversal which means we'll go from source to destination which is nothing but let's say if the query is c upon a so basically going from c to actually a and finding the answer in between cool and let's see the code it's simply very 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 easy we will be having our uh, evident to divisor which means c upon a i will start from c and i will try to reach my a start to end start to end and that would be it i just break down the code all the code is pretty big because we have to transform the input to actually a graph and then apply our traverse on the graph so i have divided the code completely for you guys to actually understand the pdf is also down below and the code is also also down below so don't worry on that part i will make you explain every part this calculation ex uh, equation is actually the main function which we have to write so firstly 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 as we know that our input is in the form of a graph so let's build this graph now how i build it because we know for every node i have another node and also the edge weight right you remember right that a upon b has a value as 3 which means a upon b is 3 so that a if it is connected to b and it can also be possible that it a is connected to c so it can have a edge weight as 4 which means a upon c is actually 4 so basically i can say okay a upon 3 a upon c is let's say okay it's 3 let's say it is 4 cool for the example which i have taken so if a upon c is actually a 3 and let's say a upon e is actually a 5 so basically i can have multiple rights so it is simply making your directed graph directed weighted graph out of simple input which means i have a upon c as 3 a upon e as 5 i can simply take a graph where graph is nothing but okay one part is nothing but strings for every string for every string which is let's say a at this part i have another I, you can have a vector of pair you can have a map you can have anything here for simplicity i took a map so basically it is nothing but for this a you can have multiple multiple outputs as you saw it is b c e so for this a i have c and e and then i also into store k for this a to c what is the actually weight it is nothing but three for a to e it is nothing but five for a to b it would have been four that is how i will just store my graph as a map of and when i say map or set it is always unordered so it is a map of my main string which is a to actually all the denominators which is b c e and then also the weight like value which means let's say three five nine now like this it is how i will make my graph and for every node cool now my graph is let's say made oh okay Aryan, how the graph is made show the us the code no worries let's see the code so you will see that okay graph i just passed the input as my equations and also my values because ultimately to build a graph i need equations and values because ultimately i want a upon b is let's say three so i just want to build a graph out of a upon b i just want the three that's it right cool so i just want to build a graph out of it now simply what i will do is i will just initialize my graph as because i said it is another map of string to actually another map of string to double that is how i showed you here now when it is done simply 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 going on to every equation because for every equation i have to find this result which means it is the numerator it is the denominator which is it is the dividend it is the divisor and it is the value so i need to make a to actually have a graph map to b and it's another value which means a to b is actually a three so it is i will simply do is okay everything is crashing today damn but no worries at all um what we will do is simply that for that a which means for that dividend a for that divisor which is b i will have this value as three that is the value and samely for this b to a i will have a value as one upon three so for this b which is the divisor to a the value is one upon value which is this particular v that is how i will just make my directed graph and i will return that graph now my graph is made my graph is made now i will also initialize the answer because ultimately i have to return the answer for every query so it is for 
returning the answer for every query. Now, okay, cool. The part of initialization of the graph is done. Um, get, getting the query is done. Everything is done. Now, going on to the queries itself. I went on to the query. I find out, okay, for this query, I have to find the answer for A upon C, which means A is the dividend. C is the divisor. I have to find the answer for A upon C. I just found, okay, let's grab both C, A and C. Now, I also know if any of them is not available in my actual input, which I had, for sure I had to return a minus one. As you saw in the above, if I had example of this particular stuff, let's go above, very above. Uh, as you saw, A upon E. E was not there. So the answer was actually a minus one. X was not there. So the answer was minus one. So if any of the string, if input, which means let's say A upon C. So basically if any of them A or C is not there, then I'm going to return a minus one. So I will just go and check in my graph that, okay, hey graph, do you have both numerator and denominator? If any one of them is not found, which means if the dividend, which is the numerator is not found, or if the divisor, which is the denominator, it is not found, I have to return a minus one, which means I have to push back in my answer array as minus one. Cool. Now, if both are there, now start to find from this A, try to reach to C, which means you have to start from this dividend, which means it is the start node. You have to ultimately end to a end node, which is the divisor, ultimately passing my graph and visit because for sure in a DFS traversal, we have a thumb rule that we visit every node exactly once. Now for that, you have to keep track of what all nodes are visited. We can have a simple unordered set of our strings because ultimately the inputs are strings itself. So to actually keep track, okay, what all nodes are visited and then ultimately it is done. Answer is nothing but okay, final answer. Okay, if I am able to reach, I will overwrite this answer with my temporary answer. So it, it, I initialize my answer as minus one because if I'm able to reach, I will overwrite this answer finally, which means from I will start from this uh, source node. If I am ultimately able to reach this end node, I will overwrite this answer and it will become something else apart from minus one. But if I'm not able to reach it, it will still remain minus one. Thus, I will just push in minus one. But if I'm able to reach it, so I will override with my answer. And how's the actual answer? It will be actually updated by this value as temporary answer. That is how I pass it. Now, going on to the actual function of DFS, which you have to implement simply, 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 a simply very short, small code of DFS. How? Firstly, I just check, okay, if this node I am going on right now, is it actually visited or not? If it is visited, oh God, run away, run back. If it is visited, just run away. Else if it is not, firstly, mark that node as visited so that you will never come on to that node again. And also check. If on reaching that node, you have finally reached your destination. I told you, right? Ultimately, my aim is to reach this end, which is the destination. If I am able to reach this destination, oh God, just to say that upgrade, as I said, answer is storing the final answer and temporary answer is the, okay, right now, what is the answer? Right now, what is the answer? If you are able to reach your final answer, just which means the final node, which is the destination, just update your answer as by 10 and just return. You're good. Else, if it is not, just simply try to go on to every of the neighbor as in a simple DFS. That's what we do. Now, as we go on to every neighbor, what have what we have to pass on? We have to pass on the node, right? Because ultimately our DFS require another node. Now, node as in are in graphs neighbor, right? Now in my graph, I had something like this. If you remember that A, it had a map to actually B, which had, which had a value. Okay, this has, okay, three. Now that A, it can also have, let's say C, it can have a four. Now E, it can have a five. Right, it is how A upon B is three, A upon C is four, A upon E is five. Now B, C and E are the neighbors. So basically it is nothing but that I, I'm just iterating on all the pairs of this graph of node. So basically I'm iterating on this now. Right, because it is the neighbors of A, as simple as that. Now, neighbor dot first is actually this particular value, which is B, C, or E. So, okay, because it is the neighbor actually. Now, destination will always remain same because ultimately my aim is to reach this destination. Graph and visited will remain as it is. Answer will not get updated at all because ultimately I update answer only and only when I am able to reach this destination part, which I did here, which I did here, okay, which I did here. And, but, 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 but. I said that I will update my temporary answer because as I showed you that 
I will keep on updating my answer by this method. As I am going on further and further, you will see I keep on updating the answer. As you saw here, I was going on, I have to go from A to C. But meanwhile, I go from A to B, I have to. Now, B to C, I have 2 into 3 and so on and so forth. I will just keep on multiplying. That is how I will reach my particular value. If I have written that same thing down anywhere else. Yeah, no. But cool, you got that point, right? A to B is 2. Then I will just store this 2 in my temporary answer then if i just go from this ne next node to the next node i just multiply the uh, temporary by the next edge bit, which is three it was earlier two thus you will just get a two here so two into three which is six now ultimately let's say if you had to go to let's say d then you would have multiplied your temporary with five and it had been six already so it will be nothing but six and five thirty that is how you will actually go on from every node, which means you will keep on, keep on, keep on updating your temporary by nothing but this multiplication of weight. Next weight, next weight, next weight. And thus, you will ultimately keep on updating the actual multiplication of parts. Now, ultimately, as it goes on, our DFS will actually be completed. Now, it will actually return us answer as updated answer and if the answer is no matter if it is minus one which means i was not able to visit my divisor at all from my dividend which means from the start note i was not able to visit my end note if i was able to visit my end note good very good answer will be updated by the actual answer and you need to push in that actual answer in your final array and that is how you will return your final answer that is pretty much it and the complexity as we have shown earlier for every query i am doing a bfs or a dfs traversal both have same time complexity is e of e plus v space complexity is e of o of v for actually the visited and also if you just make a graph out of it so for sure your graph needs to be for every vertex for, because see graph is nothing but you have all the vertices here and then you have all the okay for this vertex what all edges you have it was very less 2020 so that won't be an issue so that is actually depends upon your okay what all vertices you have and what all edges you have and that is how you will just solve your uh, space complexity code for c plus plus java and python is it down below although the code is a bit big and for sure it would be because it's actually a very good problem i hope that you guys liked it if yes then do hit the like button it has motivates a lot if you want to know anything about okay how i just write and stuff all the products are down below you can just uh, check them out and that would be great if you have not watched the vlog the shorts anything we have live streams also so if you are just preparing for online assessments interviews everything stuff live streams happen daily which means every day the contest happens even if it is bi-weekly weekly any con contest of liquid happens we have the li li live stream for that so for sure do join us at 11 pm or 11 am 11 pm for bi-weeklies 11 am for weeklies that is all see you next video goodbye take care